He's one of the most well-known Canadians of all time. He's often called the father of Confederation. And he appears on our $10 bill. I'm talking, of course, about Sir John A. Macdonald, Canada's first ever Prime Minister and one of the country's most important political figures. In 2001, Parliament designated January 11th as Sir John A. Macdonald Day. The third of five children, John A. Macdonald was born on January 10th, 1815, in Glasgow, Scotland. Five years later, his family would make a permanent move to Canada. Later in life, Macdonald would become a lawyer, businessman, politician, and eventually the first Prime Minister of Canada. Macdonald grew up in what was then Kingston, Upper Canada. At the age of 15, he began articling with a prominent Kingston lawyer to help earn money for his family. Macdonald would later say, I had no boyhood. From the age of 15, I began to earn my own living. By the time he was 19 years old, Macdonald opened and managed his own office in Kingston. He continued to practice law for the remainder of his life. Although law was his lifelong passion, later in life, Macdonald also developed an interest in business. He joined many local organizations seeking to make a name for himself in the community. It was his interest in law and business that eventually led Macdonald to try his hand at politics. He first entered the world of politics in 1843 at the municipal level, serving as an alderman in Kingston. He became increasingly active in conservative politics, and at the age of 29, Macdonald was elected to the Legislative Assembly of the Province of Canada, representing his hometown of Kingston. During these early years of his political career, John A. Macdonald had emerged as a shrewd politician who believed in pursuing practical goals by practical means. It was these characteristics that helped him get noticed in the political arena and eventually got him his first cabinet post as Receiver General in 1847. During this time, Macdonald also played a big hand in forming the Liberal Conservative Party and was rewarded with the prestigious position of Attorney General of Canada West. Although he's known for many things, perhaps his greatest accomplishment was his work on the British North America Act and the union between the provinces that eventually became known as Canada. Queen Victoria announced that the Dominion of Canada would come into existence on July 1, 1867. Macdonald was knighted for his work and was appointed as the country's first ever Prime Minister. From the beginning, Macdonald's government would face many obstacles. At the time, there was no railway link connecting the new regions of Canada. Many wanted to see closer political and economic ties between provinces. Macdonald undertook the construction of what would become Canada's first national railway system, linking Quebec City and Halifax. Macdonald's role as Prime Minister would be interrupted in 1873, when his Conservative government was forced to resign over a scandal involving the Pacific Railway. He was accused of accepting bribes in exchange for the National Rail contract. The Liberals, under Alexander Mackenzie, took over. Macdonald was never considered a great orator, but many have said that his most memorable public address was made when he delivered a five-hour speech in the House, in which he vehemently denied the charges brought against him. The Conservatives returned to power in 1878, and Macdonald once again became Prime Minister. In order to rebuild his party, Macdonald began introducing economic barriers to avoid American influence and protect Canadian goods, an initiative that would be termed his national policy. The program would result in the resurrection of Macdonald's political career in central Canada. His second term as Prime Minister was marked mostly by the construction of the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway. British Columbia had insisted upon a transport link to the east as a condition for joining Canada. Many saw this as essential to the creation of a unified nation. In 1885, Macdonald faced yet another major obstacle, 
with the uprising among the Métis in Canada. The eventual arrest and execution of Louis Riel resulted in MacDonald losing political ground among both French Catholics and English Protestants. Sir John A. MacDonald won three more elections in 1882, 1887 and 1891. After winning the election of 1891, he had the honor of introducing his son Hugh, elected as a member for the first time to the House of Commons. However, MacDonald would not live long enough to witness his son's political performance, passing away just three months after the opening of Parliament. During his political career, MacDonald earned several nicknames, including Old Chieftain, Nation Builder, and Canada's Patriot Statesman. But what about his personal life? What was Johnny MacDonald like beyond the world of politics? MacDonald's private life was marked by a number of misfortunes. His first wife was ill for most of their marriage and eventually passed away. Their first son died at the age of 13 months. His second marriage to Susan Agnes Bernard was saddened by the chronic illness of his only daughter, Mary. Many refer to MacDonald himself as a character from a Charles Dickens novel. As a consequence of his tragic personal life, MacDonald became a heavy drinker for much of his life. Sir John A. MacDonald held the position of Prime Minister for 19 years, making him the second longest serving Prime Minister in Canadian history. As the leader of the country, he oversaw the expansion of the Dominion of Canada from sea to sea, and his political legacy will be entrenched in Canadian history books forever.